What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the February 6th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Standup. Here are today's top headlines. First up, after scraping nuclear reactors, Germany to spend billions on new gas power plants. Next up, Steinberg embraces nuclear energy, supports third nuclear reactor at Millstone. Staying along the nuclear trend, nuclear icebreakers escort Russian LNG modules through thick Arctic ice. Next up, over to the grid, relying on interconnectors for imports carries risk. And finally, flying over to China. China objects to UN funds warning on solar force labor risks. <laughs> it's funny China coming out to uh, stand up for the labor rights, but uh, Stu will oh, yeah. dive into all of that. He'll then toss it over to me. I'll quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas finance segments. Uh, but as always, I'm Stuart Turley, joined by the executive producer of the show, Stuart Turley. Let's kick this off. <laughs> you're you're having a day like I am, oh mighty one. Hey, let's go rumbling over here to my buddies over there in Germany. You can't buy this kind of stupid, Michael. Uh, after scraping nuclear reactors, Germany to spend billions on new gas power plants. Um, Michael, as I get into this article, you know, they just had the Nord Stream blow up. We don't we allegedly don't know who did it. So they're really short of LNG. And then our beloved uh, di uh, diaper Dan, I mean, uh, president uh, is banning the LNG exports. And now they have no LNG exports coming in. Uh, Berlin, listen to this, has agreed to spend $16 billion to build four new major nat natural gas plants to meet electricity demand in a major overhaul of the energy's grid. They're taking down wind and they're building coal plants as well, too. They're not talking about the coal, but the natural gas is in here. Uh, the energy firm Uniper, um, which expects to be involved in the construction, said it was revealed that the coalition has re reached a political consensus. It means that they're about to get voted out of office is what that translates to in, in English. <laughs> It's 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 true. I mean, we love we love our good Chancellor Sergeant Schultz over there. Um, it's and it and they they in last April, Michael, they could have extended twenty years on their nuclear reactors. They they shut them down early. Uh, the three nuclear uh, reactors last April, and the uh, they're going to miss their target by cutting their greenhouse emissions by sixty five percent. <laughs> I, I I love this this quote. Granted, it's from the environmental groups. They remain skeptical, though, with Greenpeace saying this is a perfect example around the hype around hydrogen is just a smokescreen for more fossil gas. They have no idea that hydrogen, the Hindenburg bird blew up for a reason. So as we say in uh, Texas, Oklahoma talk, it blew up for a really big reason. So hydrogen is not going to go anywhere no um all right let's go to steinberg embraces nuclear energy and supports a third nuclear reactor at millstone uh this is pretty darn cool uh when we take a look at the uh chair uh, representative jonathan steinberg a democrat out of westport is now one of the staunchest supporters i'm pretty thrilled when we have people on both sides of the aisle work together quote unquote uh, this is from him when i first came to the legislature i didn't know about energy like anyone else i flipped the switch and the lights came on he said then there was a little skeptical of nuclear we thought it was always yesterday's kind of energy but as soon as i started doing my homework i discovered that nuclear was a viable option it's carbon free and if you do a really good managing it the environment and the safety concerns it should be considered in the mix hats off to the democrat i like him mm -hmm. i mean i don't like him i don't know him but at least i liked what he said yeah i mean it, it's it's about time somebody came out and exactly what did he say he just flipped the lights on and just assumed they'd come on. He didn't really think about the chain reaction that goes down. So, again, we applaud people for doing their education. There's still a – I think 
the, the problem is when people just say, well, nuclear is the answer. Well, if it was the answer, don't you think we would have gotten there at this point? There, um, I did uh, only know, only, uh, no, only because it was harder to uh, siphon funds off of nuclear because it was uh, bigger building projects and stuff. The new Green New Deal allowed for a lot of money transitioning from the wealthy to the wealthy and off of the backs of the middle and uh, lower class. So the answer is nuclear is too stable. It 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 definitely is, you know, and, and I applaud him. And, you know, again, yes. we applaud Steinberg for coming out here and doing this. You know, all the money that they're trying to send Ukraine right now is... Is could is, we could have poured that into nuclear and had a few of these guys up and running? Well, it's just and, and absolutely. And he, I, Steinberg also noted that the nuclear power can also reduce risks of blackout and brownouts. And thank goodness for uh, Meredith Anglin uh, on the shorting of the grid. I love uh, love her, but she also talked about you got to have that baseline on the grid, Michael. Can't, uh, no baseline, it. all bad. Yep. So all let's right, go let's to the move next to one. the Arctic. Hey, speaking of Putin, um, you know, they, they were trying to call ahead of, hey, uh, you know, I'm glad I was able to uh, get Tucker and Putin all set up. But yep, did you that know good. that Tucker just put out on, on X that the uh, CIA was hacked into his signal account and they said, you got to come get approval if you're going to go interview Putin? Yeah, he, he no ran that on Fox News a, a in in November, right? He came out and said that on on Fox, one of his monologues. Oh yeah, but no, this was in, this was one he just had a release out mm -hmm. on. It was like holy smokes, dude! Um, that they're they're watching him. Uh, well, we okay. appreciate you brokering that. Oh yeah, not uh, I do not need them listening to me. Nuclear reactors, uh, nuclear icebreakers escort Russian LNG modules through thick Arctic ice. Uh, Michael, there's also a gigantic move on this, and this this story ties along with our other LNG that the Biden administration is hampering. Germany needs it. It's going to be kind of funny because they're going to end up buying it from Germany that is brokered through another carrier group, and they're going to start laundering LNG. It's a little tougher than uh, oil, but they're going to start doing it. Here's the advantage for China is that the Arctic routes go up over and the icebreakers, they have four huge nuclear icebreakers, dude. I'm, I love these things. Mm -hmm. The, and the, uh, the Arctic LNG two project is moving full steam and the U S came back in and we tried to claim another 500,000 acres or something like that in the Arctic. Uh, but yet we're not going to drill it. Um, the, here's a quote. The difficulty in making progress is certainly due to the compressed Hamaki ice pack, uh, bless you, which forms the compression ridges, which is very difficult to move forward, even for the nuclear icebreakers. Um, so it's not easy going through, but I guarantee you, you throw in a, a nuclear ice uh, fleet in there. They Russians didn't know what they're doing. Yep. No, absolutely. Right. Let's go to the interconnect. Uh, this one, I got to give a shout out to Tammy Nemeth uh, from the Nemeth report. Um, this goes along with another story, Michael. Mm hmm. Uh, Britain uh, just had the 1.4 gigawatt Viking link with Denmark became commercial at the end of December. This is really uh, pretty wild. This is the Secretary of State for Energy, uh, Claire uh, Culato. Uh, great news today is the Viking link inter interconnector starts to transport energy between Denmark and the UK under the North Sea, 470 five mile cables the longest land and subsea electricity cable in the world and will provide cleaner cheaper more secure power up to 2.5 million homes in the uk 
It will help British families save 500 million on their bills over the next decade while cutting emissions. Yep. Okay. That is almost pie in the sky, mm -hmm. except for the fact that uh, there's a lot of hydro in coming, coming in from there. A lot of natural gas coming in from there now uh, off of these uh, from the power plants and stuff. So hydro and natural gas. Here's the problem. Hydro, they're having a little bit of a drought over there. <laughs> Can't catch so you, a break. Oh, no. So you now got your interconnect going under the sea, and then the hooties and the blowfish threaten to cut uh, intercontinental internet cables running along the Red Sea bottom. And that was from yesterday, Michael. Now, what they're also doing is there's another group that is threatening to cut pipelines and interconnects, energy interconnects. I do not want to do business with the U.S. under this current administration, and I would not want to have undersea pipelines <laughs> at all no. for anybody. <laughs> the Ukrainian SEALs might take them out. Oh yeah, on a on a uh, yacht, uh, on a three. They went for a three hour cruise to take it out. Okay, so let's go to the last one here, buddy. Uh, China objects to UN fund warnings on solar's forced labor risks. You know what? If you you know this one just kind of really gets me kind of worked up in the hypocrisy range here. Mm -hmm. China has opposed the green projects by the UN's flagship climate fund because their documents mention the risk of forced labor in the Chinese dominated supply chains of solar panels. There is more to this article than what is in the article. Uh, let me just tell you this. Um, it's unacceptable. Uh, China's, I'm going to butcher this one. Boy, this is bad. Michael, it's Yang Zi Lui uh, <laughs> said the unsubstantiated allegations or so called forced labor allegations in the solar supply chain included project document. It's unacceptable mm -hmm. to have this presumption of guilt and stigmatization of the uh, PV photogenic uh, supply chain. Uh, Chinese PV should be treated as fair, just, non-discriminatory manner. And I just thought I got tickled at this. But, Michael, the real story behind this um, is because China, uh, even though the UN, it this is trying to stop the uh, Belt and Road Initiative, which I've covered with George um, uh, McMillan. Mm -hmm is the fact that the UN's the WEF and the W and the UN are trying to finance renewable projects around the Belt and Road Initiative. So the UN is trying to cash in on this and so they're throwing rocks at China which is pretty stupid. Yeah, and you know, I don't think this is something that gets talked about nearly as much as it should. I mean, we know it it we know the we're all familiar with the forced labor that's going on with the Congo and the conflict minerals. You know, that right. probably we haven't talked about as much, but this is the other side of the coin. I mean, the, the problem is you have in this uh, Xinjiang region, which is the source of <laughs> two fifths of the world's solar grade polysilicon. And that's a key input into it, solar. Yes. Problem is we know that there's what can probably, you know, what, you know, the, What's been reported by the U.N. is a serious human rights violation going on there, specifically against the Uyghur population. So, you know, obviously China is going to push back. They're not a huge fan. All to that, I say, once your companies stop having to stop having to construct nets around the building so that people don't have to jump and catch them, then I'll take your human rights seriously. But as long as I'm seeing nets, I'm not believing any of that. So we're going to take them off the sandstone headquarters. <laughs> yeah, we're going to fit. <laughs> but you know, There's somewhere else I'd like to take the nets off of, but uh, that's for another. Go. But, um, but you know, you sit back and kind of go, I just lost my train of thought, but it was good. That was a good one. Mike. Absolutely. So, well, no, we'll go ahead and, and move over to finance here. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here, guys, as always the news and analysis that you 
uh, have been hearing is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do an outstanding job of making sure that website stays up to speed with everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business. What hat are you wearing? Wear me a uh, Satellitics hat. Uh, I just did some interviewing with them, and uh, CEO's cool cat, man. So awesome. I got to get, got to show some swag. If you send us some swag, we will put it on the air. We will wear it for an ad read for another company. Just kidding. Um, uh, <laughs> but uh, but no, guys. Energynewsbeat.com, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, the best place to go ahead and and find all your data news combo. Check out the description below um to see all of the timestamps, links to the articles, and get in contact with the show. I don't really have much for the for the finance section, Stu. We did see um, uh, overall stock market was only down about three tenths of a percentage point. Nasdaq only about one tenth of a percentage point. Uh, dollar index stays strong at about a half a percentage. We did see uh, an interview last night um, that or, or that came out on sixty minutes. Uh, with Fed Chair Jerome Powell, you know, nothing crazy came out of that other than maybe some read between the lines um, about where he thinks rates might go, specifically if in, if the target inflation rate is 2%, back of the nap were in math, what they're looking at, we, we may not see the rate cuts that we expect because they might be exactly where they want to be. So I think the markets are are kind of bracing a little bit for that. Um, we did see a, a, about a, a dollar increase in, in the late trading session on oil currently sitting at 72.68. Um, we did see Brent oil up all the way over $79. You know, maybe, you know, it, it really comes off the back that what, what's going on in the Middle East right now, tensions have seemed to continue to from ramp up a little bit. We do know that, um, you know, we've in, you know, the United States has increased its drone activity. They came out this morning and said they've conducted some successful drone operations. Um, you know, no ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. And, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the quote is that those tensions, you know, in those oil producing regions are, are going to continue and, and set to linger. Um, you know, these the you know as Stu says the Hooties and the Blowfish as they continue to to attack shipping vessels that's gonna obviously not 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 play too kindly uh, to a lot of these uh, oil trading routes um, and and we we did see that Ukrainian drones struck the largest oil refinery uh, in the country south um, that's coming out of Kiev and that's also you know after a series of long range attacks on those facilities mainly attempting to reduce their export of nap of naphtha which is a petrochemical feedstock that helps in the refining business. Um, quote out of John Kilcliffe, partner at Again Capital, these attacks on Russia oil supplies are starting to take a toll. Um, and he also said there's only so much the market can discount before you have to say that we are now pricing the geopolitical risk accurately. Hmm, I wonder where John Cludcliffe wants prices to go. Sounds like something Stu would say. Um, I'm just kidding. Point of the matter is, um, as we continue to see prices um, um, stay where they're at, we're going to have to constantly wonder again, what is priced in or not? The only other oil and gas news that I saw today um, was Vital Energy. Um, they went ahead and closed their second act transaction to bone up their additional to bone up some working interest related to their recent Permian uh, Basin acquisition. If if you remember, about a couple months ago, they required some assets from Henry LP, Mori and Henry Partners, and Henry Resources, which you can kind of collectively think of as Henry. They go ahead and add on another seventy eight million dollars to that, which brings mm -hmm. up their working interest. Um, to an average of about 70 um, or their, to, to shore up their working interest. Um, this was uh, not a public deal. Henry is not a, a public company, but it was um, it was funded specifically through um, um, common stock on this one. So that $78 million came out at about uh, 879,000 shares, which valued um, basically those shares were valued about $54.96. Uh, $54 so gives you guys an idea of what they decided to do. They also um, um, gave some, some mandatory 2% cumulative convertible notes, um, and they don't really expect any transitions um, associated with the, with the tag-along rights. Quote from uh, Jason Piggott, who's the uh, or Piggott, who's the president and CEO over there, we are pleased to have closed our second transaction to increase working interest in high-value properties associated with the Henry um, acquisition. You know, these, these are 51% uh, oil wells. Um, and, and, and then the goal they're hoping to is, is those 54 wells do somewhere around 2000 BOE a day. But again, that's about 51% oil. 
What else you got, Stu? We're getting ready to head to Nape tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. We've got uh, some all-star CEOs that we're going to be interviewing. Uh, we are supposed to be scheduled with the governor of Oklahoma and governor of Texas. I mean, we got to confirm, but, you know, they may look at me and go, nah, no humpbacks allowed. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, absolutely. It's going to be fun. Check us out. Booth 1957. Come check us out. We'll be there with RT, one of our favorite guys representing Paco Country Operating. And David um, Blackman. David Blackman's going to be there. All the podcasters are going to be there. So if you want to get on a show, swing by Booth 1957. It's going to be a lot of fun. But with that, we'll let you guys get out of here, get back to work, finish up your Tuesday. Appreciate you checking us out. Energynewsbeat.com. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thank you.